it's been it's been really wonderful. Like it, it almost feels off brand for such a dark <laughs> and gloomy project to say that we are really excited and happy with what's been happening. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. All right, well, uh, Soren and Etienne, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, especially today. Um, <laughs> you seem very calm and relaxed, uh, but mm -hmm. as we're talking, the release of your album is two days away. Uh, or maybe a day and a half at this point. Um, that's exciting. Um, the, when people get to see this video, it'll probably be a few days after uh, the release. So, uh, you know, we should check in soon to see how you feel after the release and before the release. But this album is already getting quite a little bit of buzz. Um, exciting times. You only release your debut album one time in your career. So, uh, what's uh, what's going on right now? Are you truly as calm as you appear to be, or in the inside you're like, this is crazy? I think we both think it's pretty wild at this at this stage. <laughs> um, you know, this is the first uh, this is the first thing that we've released as a band, so it's uh, it's a lot to be going straight into our debut album and also having our debut album released by such an excellent label and uh, exactly. Hearing the feedback that that we were getting on it, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 very it's very exciting for us. Certainly, certainly above and beyond what we were what we were expecting. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a very exciting time today. We just had the stream on YouTube dropped of the full record. Yeah. So while it's not out, the the public is now able to listen to it, and we're getting those responses in, and it truly is. As Soren says, it's above and beyond anything we expected when we started yeah. this band, anything we hoped for. So it's been it's been really wonderful. Like it, it almost feels off brand for such a dark <laughs> and gloomy project to say that we are really excited and happy with what's been happening. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, for better or worse, we are. Um, yeah, where's all the darkness and the melancholy? <laughs> Come on, guys. Sad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A good point there, Soren, when you mentioned 20 bucks spin. Uh, it has become one of those labels um, that, you know, every few years you see a new label come to that status where it's almost like you can blindly buy whatever they put out because even though they are, they are still an underground label, but amongst the ocean of underground labels you have now, they stand out as being a quality label. Um, that's cool to be picked up by them and getting that trust. How did that happen? Because, I mean, I, I know that obviously the, the global pandemic didn't help you with your timing when you started this project. But even with that, if we take a step back, this is a pretty new project or a pretty new band. Um, even with a pandemic, things have gone pretty quickly. Maybe not as quickly as you wanted to two years ago, but pretty quickly nonetheless. I mean, our project isn't as new as you might think. <laughs> We've uh, we started jamming together in 2018, so okay. some of the, the earliest songs on this on this record were the very first songs we wrote for this project. Um, we started writing Initiation and Without Answer in probably the, the fall or summer of 2018. So these songs have okay. some years on them already by this stage. So while they're fresh to the the broader world, they're um, They've definitely been steeping for quite a long time with uh, with us, so it feels at this at this stage, uh, it feels very exciting to you know finally share share this with uh, with the rest of the world. Um, but things did did um, seem to move move quickly once we once we got um, once we got the signing, which was yeah. Yeah, very very exciting to us. I don't know. Yeah. Like we we do, we certainly have been working locally for quite some time, but we hadn't necessarily produced anything that had gotten massive traction. Um, we had been, we'd been playing live and writing, but we didn't have any formal releases out. And right. ultimately, I just got in touch with 20 Bucks Spin through their demo submission page. Um, they they hadn't really put out any gothic doom before, so... Like, they were a record we were 
record label we were keen to reach out to because like I love Chemis and I mm -hmm. love like a lot of the projects that they've worked with. Mm -hmm. But at least I was pretty surprised when they got back to us and said they'd be interested in putting okay. up the record. That's, I would say that was the biggest moment in the project where we looked at each other and said, wow, like this might be happening. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was very surprising because yeah, 20 Bucks Fit is a label that I've admired for, for quite some time. Um, right. They, uh, they, they are definitely are, they do have the reputation of being, you know, tastemakers in the in the genre and picking out some really quality, unique acts. Like I'm wearing my Obsequier shirt today <laughs> and uh, yeah, Palms of Sorrow Kings is I think one of the most, like, you know, unique and um, like yeah. timeless uh, metal records that I've heard in a very, very long time. So it's, uh, it, it was it was very very exciting to to be picked up by them and it, and it truly was just on the basis of our demo submission yeah, yeah, yeah. over to them into the that's into amazing the we didn't really have much of a, a, a social media following or anything and the record was compl was totally done by that stage so it did feel like a bit of a risk for us to complete the record and then be sending it out to um to labels but uh it has worked out in the end for us so yeah and even just seeing like so many people who were willing to pre-order the vinyl and drop that money and that kind of commitment they've never heard us they they have no yeah, idea yeah. like what the rest of the record sounds like and i think that's a testament to how much trust like a lot of the underground has in that label mm -hmm. oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and so first of all it's super cool that you know the old school way of like hey we have a demo tape, we're gonna send it to a label and we actually get a record deal out of it. Works still in 2023. Um, I mean, I know it wasn't obviously this month that you did that, but anyway. Um, one thing that you kind of hint at, I mean, you, you definitely played and, and, you, rec and you, you record some stuff, maybe not getting a whole lot of opportunities to get local feedback. You know, you guys are a Vancouver band um, mm -hmm. Western Canada in the last few years has been very active when it comes to metal, but it's mm -hmm. been predominantly either thrash metal or, you know, power metal. Um, you know, there, there's obviously, you know, some technical death metal bands like Archpire as well that, that have been doing really well. But if you look at like the Western Canadian scene, there are a few gothy doom bands in mm -hmm. there at the moment. Do you feel like you've been a little bit like those five years that you've been working on this a little bit on your island within the scene? I think I think it's been really good for us because we have that split phase where there's a lot of doom, but a lot of it sludge or desert style doom. Yeah, 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 for sure. Bands, bands who we can play with at a show and it won't seem absurd. But at the same time, people have looked at us and they often look at us and say, this it's seems unique. Right. This yeah. isn't what everyone else is doing. So that's exactly. a good sweet spot, I think. Would you agree? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely um, you know set us uh, set us apart a bit, and you know it's 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 been able to get us some really great uh, opportunities that uh, certainly um, were were a bit above our, our pay grade at the at the time because we were uh, a unique, a relatively unique band in the. In the scene, like uh, yeah, last year we had um, we had the chance to open for First Fall of the Sun and and yeah, yeah. around when we had no album out. <laughs> so, but I think our, our musical styles are very compatible. So, uh, in, in that sense, it has created some some very exciting opportunities for us. And the, the, we've had really great response from the audiences who have seen us. Um, I've certainly heard a lot of people say that they're they're so excited to hear something in this kind of style, and you know, it's yeah, a yeah, long yeah. time since they've heard this kind of style. So. Yeah, we've, we've had really positive uh, reception. Yeah, like to be clear, I think the scenes treated us really well. Yeah. And as far as things were moving slowly, I think it's just because we were moving slowly. But I think it was worth. It was something. <laughs> that's worth just that's just doom. That's just doom. Like it, yeah. it, it, it takes a little bit more time. <laughs> Sure, somebody's gonna label you as a doom band or a goth doom band, but um, it, it sounds like you, you you really made an effort not to restrict yourself to one bucket. Was that a conscious a, a conscious approach, or did that just happen naturally because you have very different influences? Some of that does happen naturally because of there are difference in, in influences. Like I, I certainly draw a lot more on the like traditional doom like epic doom elements my myself um mm -hmm. and i think that that comes through in the in the songs that i had the the lead on on writing um like yeah big big classic 
doom riffs or something that I love to I love to write. Uh, and I and I think that that's something that we both we both um, you know we we try to bring those we bring those elements into each other's songs when we're collaborating and bringing the songs into their into their final form. So I think that they inevitably do have. Um, you know, they, they they reflect both of us and reflect both of our both of our tastes at, at the end of at yeah. the end of the day. And that's something that's been really great about the project is that I feel like we can, you know, balance balance each other's tastes out with um with a bit of a counter a counterpoint from from a drawing from a different kind of well. So I think that that's really important to our identity as a band. Yeah, like I think we do really have that natural diversity because while while we do collaborate on everything, we do have our our own songs we bring in. Mm -hmm. So I guess to put more detail into that on this record, um, Initiation, Apathy's Keep, and A World Beyond Shadow, as well as the interlude, were all mm -hmm. dominantly composed by Soren. Mm -hmm. Whereas okay. Creeping Moss, Without Answer, and The Path were all dominantly composed by me. And okay. as discussed, like, I think I draw more on that draconian, swallow the sun, goth doom, death doom mm -hmm. elements. Yeah. Where Soren is more influenced by the trad doom, candle mass, huge riff. Mm -hmm. And so you just, you naturally have those two different elements where it doesn't just sound like all the songs were written by the same person because they're not. Mm -hmm. But then as we yeah, both yeah. get our hands on each other's songs and bring our own ideas into them, it really becomes a record that I think fits together quite well, mm -hmm. despite uh, the two records. The band is officially the two of you. Um, you are playing live, obviously, with more people. Uh, mm -hmm. There's this is a there's a heavy sound. A lot of stuff are going on, depending on which song at which time. <laughs> more than the two of you could do, you know, just without too much magic uh, on stage. Mm -hmm. So you brought on board. Um, I think it's three additional musicians. Um, some, if not all of them, we've all also seen on some videos that have been put out. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering, uh, given that we've also seen them like in videos and that they've been announced as some of the tours, uh, the tour dates that uh, that you're gonna embark on soon, um, is it still the two of you with additional guest musicians, or are these people playing a bigger role now than than you would have thought, you know, two years ago? And will they continue to play that role going forward? It's an interesting dynamic because they're. They're very good friends of ours. Like the people mm -hmm. we know through the scene, like the guitarist we picked up, Jessica. She's in a band called Caius, who are like a really awesome, like Kalma style mellow death band who I'm a big fan of. But at the same time, the, the project has has always been, especially now, I think we're very keen to keep to keep creative control between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I think they understand that. And most of the people who are playing live with us have their own projects that are their own first priorities. Yeah. So I think I think we're still feeling it out and we're not 100% committed to remaining officially a two piece forever. Mm -hmm. But I think that's something we're we're taking slow. Yeah. And uh, we also want to respect the, the fact that um, yeah, as Etienne mentioned, the, the musicians that we work with have their other projects that they're um, we don't want to infringe upon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we're we're happy to have them uh, committed to playing to playing shows with us. And um, yeah, for the for the time being, we can only we can only look ahead so so far. But um, the plan is to, to continue playing with them live. So uh, which, which has been which has been great. And I think that we'll yeah we'll see also as as the time shifts more into um, thinking about the next record and jamming out some of those tracks. Um, you know, some some of those questions around. Um, around roles might come to the to the forefront but for now we're very grateful to be working with some um, with you know very very talented and professional musicians that we yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and julia the the drummer we're working with she also recorded drums on the record so it's exactly been great yeah that, that continuity with her mm -hmm. in that foreseeable future you'll be playing together with another um crazy duo that doesn't care too much about rules and and uh and and staying within the box i, I had a very fun conversation with treze when uh, the latest mares of trace album came out um that's a that's really a cool record. package that is, yeah that is a great record um that's a cool package um a couple of dates in western canada have been announced 
a little bird has whispered in my ear there might be more things coming our way um what can you share with us um i don't think too much ultimately <laughs> we, we want to play as much as we can mm -hmm. while understanding that you know lives and jobs and careers are are going to limit that mm -hmm. as well as you know the album's not even out yet so we'll, we'll wait and see what opportunities come our way mm -hmm. but i think we'd love to travel a bit if we can yeah we would love to we the there's um not too many great secrets being withheld from you right now, right now um uh we're it, we're, we're still quite open in terms of how we um how we're going to present this uh live in, over the next year or so but we yeah we, we both love performing live and um and the chance to perform live after people have had the chance to, to sit with the album and, uh, and get familiar with it is very exciting to, to both of us. So we'll certainly be happy to take advantage of opportunities that come that come our way that, um, that work for, for everybody involved. Otherwise, what to expect? Uh... In terms of our approach, uh, un unlike a lot of bands who sound like us, we don't use any backing tracks live. It's mm -hmm. going to be all 100% organic with live keyboards, uh, mm -hmm. live cello from Soren here. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all the songs have been constructed in such a way that they can be performed live and uh, with their essential essence coming through. Of course, there's always going to be something that's distinct about the album experience, but uh, we're both dedicated to being able to play to play everything live in a, in a compelling way, and uh, it's been great having this this lineup, especially having the keys there. It's uh, really great to a lot, another layer yeah, of depth yeah. that we hadn't had before when we were uh, playing without keys. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to hear you know uh, an an attempt to precisely replicate the album because you know live performance is is, is something in itself and. Uh, which is uh, you know a great a great thing. So we'll um, yeah we'll be we'll be performing the yeah the the live versions <laughs> I suppose of all of our yeah of yeah, yeah, of our yeah. Songs. For example, for that in terms of without answer, that's the song that's got the most cello interlaced mm -hmm. throughout it. So when we do it live, instead what we're going to do is we extend the intro a little bit mm -hmm. so that Soren can show more of the cello motifs that appear throughout the song. Mm -hmm. And then all of the cello parts and the choruses are instead taken over by the keyboard player. And then the middle section cello is changed out actually to a guitar harmony. Mm -hmm. And then finally the cello comes back in in the end. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of the approach to make something yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have all the same pieces there live, but we're thinking about what can we do with the pieces we have mm -hmm. to make this work live. Yeah, we have some very particular logistical constraints just in terms of me needing the time to swing my bass around behind me exactly, and go yeah. into the cello and um, you know not hit anyone with my bass and then be able to like, hang up my bow, swing the bass back, and then get to the microphone. And so that's something that we've tried to build into a lot of our songs, but some places it's just not possible. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it's been, it's been great having someone else take the melody for, for a second so that's not lost. Um, Soren and Etienne, I wish you all the best um, in two days from now when this album is officially out um, and you see all the response. I know that it's already available on YouTube right now, but that you see all the people reacting to it. Um, and I'm sure that will be great. And then have, uh, wish you all the best for these few dates um, with, uh, with Mersa Thrace coming up. Um, and uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed that um, uh, more, more birds start whispering of, uh, of seeing this package come to uh, Central and Eastern Canada as well, as well as the United States. That would be super amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, wish you all the best with the release in two days. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your thoughtful questions. We appreciate it. Thanks awesome. so much. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.